millions of people have lost weight with personalized plans from Noom, like Evan, who can't stand salads and still lost 50 pounds. Salads generally for most people are the easy button, right? For me, that wasn't an option. I never really was a salad guy. That's just not who I am, but Noom worked for me. Get your personalized plan today at Noom.com. Real Noom user compensated to provide their story. In four weeks, the typical Noom user can expect to lose one to two pounds per week. Individual results may vary. There is nothing I love more than an amazing meal with high quality meat cooked at home because, let's be honest, eating out is so expensive. And you also know that eating out is the number one budget buster. That is why I am so glad I found ButcherBox. ButcherBox is a premium meat subscription service dedicated to delivering high-quality, grass-fed, and grass-finished beef, organic chicken, pork-raised crate-free, and wild-caught seafood directly to your doorstep with free shipping always. You even get exclusive member deals, recipes, and a variety of high-quality cuts at an amazing price. New users will receive their choice of two pounds of ground beef, three pounds of chicken thighs, or one pound of premium steak tips for a year. Use code ETM and get $20 off your first box at ButcherBox.com. Last night, we made a beef stew with meat from ButcherBox, and you can taste the difference. It was so satisfying and delicious, and all of our friends that were over for a dinner party, they raved at how good it was. So do yourself a favor and eat better this year with the best meat and seafood on the planet delivered to your door. ButcherBox is offering my listeners their choice of a weeknight meal essential, three pounds of chicken thighs, two pounds of ground beef, or one pound of premium steak tips for free in every order for a year. Plus get $20 off your first order. Sign up today at butcherbox.com etm. And use code ETM to choose your free offer and get $20 off. Hey, I'm Shauna Compton Game. This is Millennial Money. And today we're talking get your travel app on. Millennial Money with Shauna Compton Game. It will expand your brain. All right, so we decided to dish today about some of our favorite travel apps. And uh, these are either apps that we're currently using or apps that we want to use in the future. As you know, my husband, Jeff, who is a travel journalist, uh, and I travel around quite a bit. So a lot of these apps we use on kind of a consistent basis, and they really just make traveling so much easier. So we thought this would be just a great kind of end of the year podcast to do. Maybe you have some traveling plans over the holidays or to ring in the new year. Hopefully you do. Hopefully it's somewhere cool. And you can use some of these apps. So we're just going to kind of ping pong it back and forth and discuss some of our favorites. So I th- I am usually not too much of a huge app person, and, and and doing research for this for this episode, I was like, oh wait, that one looks cool, or that one looks cool. Uh, but then I also then I also realized there's actually a lot of apps that I actually do use, um, or at least a few that I or my go to ones. But one of the new ones that we found uh, that we just came back from a recent trip to Stockholm uh, in Sweden that Maps dot uh, me app and what it is it's basically a maps app that lets you navigate your way around any place in the world uh, without the internet connection and you and you also also don't use your data which is important if you if you have if you have a different international data um, program for your phone in another country you're you use up a lot more data so like that and i've found that out <laughs> firsthand where we had to pay a bigger, uh, a higher bill uh, when all of a sudden my data just got zapped away and stuff. So this app, ma- uh, maps.me, as in me, uh, it actually lets you use it. And and uh, one of the, th- so I think that's kind of a cool thing because any, then you don't feel lost in a the city. Then you feel like you're kind of connected and you're like, you're like, okay, you know, this is not too far from here and this is not too far from here. And, and one of the things I love to do when I travel and if either I'm, I'm in my hotel room or or I'm in a central location or, or just, oh, I'm going to go to this neighborhood, I'm going to go to that neighborhood, I like to look at maps and, and go, 
okay, well, what's in the neighborhood? Oh, well, that restaurant there, or, there, or that bar is there, or that coffee place is there. And, and, and you look it up, and then I look it up and go, oh, well, that place actually looks cool. And I think that's one way to kind of get the lay of the land. You don't feel you know, you're, you're lost or anything like that. And like when we went on the, on the trip, this last trip, we were actually in a really central location and so in a part of Stockholm that I've never stayed before. And we were close to every other neighborhood. And didn't you find it kind of easy to, to navigate and, and, and use? Yeah. You know, and I was a bit skeptical about <clears> this app because I thought like, oh yeah, right. Is this actually going to work? Like, are we actually going to be able to use this without, you know, using our cell phone data? Um, because we kept it kind of on airplane mode when we were out. But it is. I mean, you download the key is you have to download the map ahead of time. So download it before you go, you know, out of the country or wherever you're going where, you know, you don't want to use your your cell phone plan. But it actually worked. And, you know, it, it kept up on with us as we were walking and it, you know, always suggested new places to eat or, or different things to see. And so, um, you know, I think it's a really great a great app to have on your phone um, that does more than just the map. Okay, so next, what do you have up on your list, your first on on your uh, app list? Well, one of my favorites that is just an absolute go-to is TripAdvisor. And you may know TripAdvisor. uh, You may have maybe searched online and, like, come up with TripAdvisor. But uh, a reason why I love it, actually, and I'm going to kind of tell you a little bit of a secret about myself, is I like to peep. So I like to peep when we're out for walks, whenever somebody has their like windows open, I am that person looking in the window to see how other people are living. I am a crazy person. Um, I don't actually go up to the window. I'm not that nutsy, but I do like to see how other people live. So TripAdvisor for me is the equivalent of that for travel. So I can go on TripAdvisor and I can not only find, you know, bread and breakfasts and cool hotels, places that I can't find on like Expedia or another search engine, but what I love to do is I go to the actual traveler photos that are on TripAdvisor so I can see actually what the hotel looks like, what the bedroom looks like, what the bathroom looks like, and read from real people what their stay was like. But what I love about TripAdvisor is people don't just share about the hotel. They share about the area. They share about the restaurants around. They share about, you know, is it easy to get to from the airport or whatever it may be. So TripAdvisor to me is is one that you absolutely have to have on your phone. I use it before a trip. I use it during a trip. Um, if we need to maybe change things up during the trip or maybe we decide we want to stay somewhere else or, or go somewhere else, you know, I use it while we're there. But um, I I really just love that you have like transparency about where you're actually staying. And it's not like Yelp, like a lot of times on Yelp, you know, people will just complain to complain. TripAdvisor, really, people are genuinely sharing their um, experience. And you can kind of weed out the ones that maybe aren't, you know, um, real reviews. But I would say, I would say most of the reviews are, are pretty accurate. And people are pretty honest about um, you know, where they're staying and the activities and all sorts of things on TripAdvisor. Well, I think that's actually an interesting thing too, because what I always, I don't always use TripAdvisor, probably maybe before we go or from researching a place going, or especially a place I've never heard of. I'm like, oh, I've never heard of that place. Okay, let me check that out, blah, blah, blah. And then, um, but if you look up a hotel, that is a that is a totally true thing that you'll look at the, the hotel pictures and you're like, oh, it's glamorous. It's really nice and stuff like that. And then sometimes you'll see the ones on TripAdvisor and go, uh, that's not the same place that, that the hotel had on. So, so I think that is, is a really interesting thing. And I think it, yeah, I think it does, uh, a little step above, uh, Yelp in, in the reviews. And I think people are generally really honest with that. So. All right. So what do, what do you got next? Well, one of the things, uh, you know, if you travel to any foreign country, uh, you know, or, or say, say you are a, for, a, a, you know, out of the, out of the U S and you're coming here, one of the things you always have to worry about is the currency. And with these days, obviously we use our cards for almost anything, especially if you travel to so many places in Europe, you use your card, uh, anywhere, but you do kind of want to know what you're spending and you need, you, you do need to know that. So, uh, I always use the XE currency app and it is just a really cool thing that gives you updated exchange rates around the world. And, 
and has been featured in in the BBC Travel, LA Times Travel have 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 done a lot of features on this, and it's a really kind of a go to app. There's a lot of currency apps out there, but this is the one I, that I've always used. And, uh, you know, it's, it's really helpful because you're like, okay, well, how much does this beer cost me? Or how much does, does this, you know, burger cost me? How much, you know, whatever. And uh, let alone if you do actually need to get cash, which a lot of times if you're in a con- in a foreign country, you need to get to have a, l- a little bit of cash. Um, like I was saying, you know, a lot of uh, European countries these days, they're really just a card system. So you don't always have to get, um, you know, currency like it used to be. Um, but it is, it is helpful, but it's just, it's just helpful to really kind of know what you're spending on. And, and, and a lot of times, hopefully it's good. Hopefully the dollar is good and, and it's helpful to us. All right. So my next app is actually another one that was useful before you go on the trip, unless you kind of make different arrangements while you're on the trip. But Hopper is one of my favorite apps where you can find out when you should fly and when you should buy the airline ticket. And, you know, trying to decode the airlines and when you might get a better price versus when you might not is a really tricky science. It's like trying to figure out why your credit score is the number it is. Uh, and, and there's all these articles online if you go on and research, like when is the best day and the best time to buy airline tickets. A- every article says something different. And so it's really nearly impossible to figure it out. I have sort of found that like Tuesday evenings and Wednesday evenings tend to be lower prices, but I'm, I'm not sold that that actually happens. But with Hopper, um, I usually always find the best not only the best time to fly somewhere, but the re- best rates by and by and large. And I'll go and actually search the particular airline's website, just trying to find the deal that I found on Hopper, and I can't find it. So I'm convinced that they have some sort of like secret elves working in the in the back of Hopper, you know, that are that are compiling all this data. But I definitely think it's a great one to have. I, my tip is always, you know, if you find an air deal on Hopper or Expedia or whatever it may be, go to the individual airlines website too, and just double check because sometimes you can get a better deal on the airline site. But again, Hopper has been the one that I've found that's been the most accurate with the most consistent deals and also tells me, Hey, maybe you want to book this ticket on you know Friday and not today because you're going to save 20 bucks or 25 bucks or whatever it may be. It's actually extra money that I can just save by waiting a day or maybe booking a day ahead of time uh, or really zeroing in on when I want to travel. Well, and and you are actually the big person. Like you obviously give, uh, you know, our listeners uh, lots of great tips, money tips and all that kind of stuff like that. But you are truly the one that really researches. If you could see, actually see, if you could peep into our windows, like she would peep into your windows and you would actually see uh, Shauna, you know, really, she's always researching, okay, like we are going away, um, uh, for your birthday coming up in July. You, it's probably been like six months now, like you've been researching it and you're like, okay, well, we're, now we're going to go to this Greek island or now we're going to go to this Greek island or now we're going to go here. So, so Shauna really does her diligence in, in looking, uh, at that. And, and, uh, when was the last time we actually used Hopper to actually find a, a deal? Uh, well, I actually used Hopper when we just went to Stockholm. So I was able to find, you know, <laughs> an incredible deal to fly over to Stockholm. It was actually cheaper to fly to Stockholm than to fly, um, actually much cheaper than to fly to Hawaii, which is obviously way closer to Los Angeles. So, um, you know, you can really, I mean, I, I am a little bit of a freak about it. And I think that's why I try to always tell you all my tips is I spend hours and hours and hours trying to figure all these things out and decode these different things. But I, I am really a freak about, you know, if, if we can save 50 bucks or a hundred bucks, or I mean, on their airline tickets to Stockholm, it was hundreds and hundreds of dollars that we saved just by using this app. So, um, you know, it really does work. And I'm just going to try and take the pain out of searching for you guys and tell you my secret, you know, how I actually do this. Yeah, and and also listen. Uh, in the next couple of weeks, we actually have a couple, or actually several Stockholm uh, epi- episodes coming up that we did a lot of podcasts for. So you're going to really uh, dig those. Um, 
And next on my, speaking of a foreign language, uh, next is mine, uh, Google Translate and Google Trips. Now, one of them I use a lot and one of them I've never even heard of before. Uh, I think you mentioned to me the Google Trips thing before, but I've no, I've just didn't do any research on it. But Google Translate, I love. It's just, it's just, it is the best translate. I've tried a, a several other translate apps. I think I still have them on my phone that I never actually use. But Google Translate, I think, is the most accurate. Um, sometimes I'll translate something and maybe a word or two is off or in, and I'll have friends going, wait, what, what word is that supposed to be? But almost for the most part, they are, they are totally accurate. Uh, in fact, totally 100% accurate a lot of times. And, and then they also have the, the, the really cool uh, thing that you could use with your phone where you go up to a sign or, or whatever it is and, and, you know, or a, a piece of paper or something like that, and you, you, you can record that and it will actually translate for you what that says. And that is totally really helpful if you're, if you're driving anywhere, if you're trying to get directions, or even if you're, 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 you're trying to look at a menu or, you know, and they don't have an English menu. So I, I think that's a really great thing. Um, so I love, I love Google Translate a lot, but Google Trip, if you've not heard of that, about it, it will actually automatically plans and organizes your day. So you give it the information. You say, Hey, I want to go here. I want to go to this museum. I want to do this. I want to do that. And it will actually organize uh, a whole day for you in, in a city. And for me that I go on a lot of press trips, that's all we do is we have an entire organized day and you've gone on a couple of them and they're really Usually can be really long days and, 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 but very organized. Okay, we're going to go here, we're going here, we're going to go here, we're going to, you know. So it can be at your leisure, but it kind of helps you organize. Oh, yeah, okay, well, I have time here and I have time to walk over here or, or I have to take the train over here or we have to take a bus or we have to take an Uber over here. So uh, it's something that I have not used this Google trip, but uh, I think it's something I, I really want to look into and maybe use it for the, for the next one. Yeah, I mean, Google just always has such great um, apps. And, and, and I, you know, I found Google Trips when, like we said, we have not used it before, but it just has so many unique features. I think it will really be a great addition. And Google Translate is awesome, especially, you know, for those dudes out there who don't want to ask for directions. When you're in a foreign country and you cannot read the uh, the language, you need all the help you can get to help you figure out where you're going. So um, Google Google Translate is definitely to the rescue. Well, but I, what, what I think too in in Google Translate that I mean I don't speak another language, but there there are a few languages like okay I know this word or I know that word, but Google Translate or any translate thing, but I, this one I like I said I like it the best. That if you put in a few words and you speak a few words of a foreign language, so, so, so say like in, in Paris where we've gone before, and my expectations of Paris, like a lot of people would think, oh, they're rude, and if, and if you don't speak the language, they won't, they won't communicate with you and whatnot and stuff. And uh, that's just not the case, I don't think, at least not to my experience, okay, except, except for one time at the train station, the lady really didn't like us. Um, but I think if you speak a little bit of the language and you just know here, you know, hi, hello, you know, a good greeting or thank you and all, whatever it is, uh, it really goes a long way. And so if, if, so if you have this, it also just gives you the confidence. It just, you go, hey, you know what, I'm going to say this or I'm going to say that. And, and, it, and Google Translate will also help you pronounce the words if you put in the, the you know where, where it pronounces the words and that's really helpful because you could read it and go I don't know how to say that so I think I think what it is it's it just tra- traveling around the world or around anywhere it just gives you confidence and I think if you do this it can give you more confidence as well so uh so what what's next on your list all right, so uh, this is an app that admittedly I have not used yet but I have played around with a lot I actually have friends who've used it but you know when you're stuck in the airport for like that crazy nine or ten hour delay because there's a snowstorm or you know a freak summer storm or a power outage, and then you know you're you're greasy, you feel really gross. I mean, the last thing you want really want to do is get on that airplane, but you got to get on the airplane to go somewhere. But there's those people that roll up, you know, after that ten hour delay, and they look all shiny and glossy and happy, and you're thinking, what? the hell did they do that I didn't do? Well, their secret is something called the airport lounges. And there's this great app called Lounge Buddy. And what you can do is when you're in a particular airport, now you don't have to be stuck in that airport. You could just maybe have a layover. You can actually use this app to find out the different lounges that are near you in the airport. 
And you can see whether your loyalty cards or loyalty points that you have with any particular airline will let you into that lounge. But if not, you can actually pay. And I found, you know, that most of the lounges are like 40 bucks and less to get access to the lounge. And some of these lounges are amazing. I mean, some of them have, you know, showers, some of them have snacks and free beverages, they have free Wi Fi, they have TVs, some of them have sleeping bays that you can hang out at. So uh, not a lot of people are actually using Lounge Buddy, and some of my friends that that used it, um, I asked them for a review, and they said, "Oh, but we don't want to. We really don't want to tell people about this because we're afraid that the price to pay to get in these lounges is going to go through the roof, and then we won't be able to use this amazing feature." You know, I had one friend who was stuck actually in a London Heathrow Airport. And he said he used this app and it was 25 bucks and he was in the lounge for, I think he said like seven and a half hours and he felt like he was in the lap of luxury, you know, and then rolled out whenever his plane decided to take off and he was well fed, he was rested, he was clean, he smelt good and he felt good. Now he was still wearing the same clothes, but he didn't care about that. So Lounge Buddy, I think is a great app, especially if you're traveling long distances where, you know, you're app to maybe have a delay. Uh, you know, I'd pay 25 bucks to go hang out in a lounge any day. I mean, th- you know, use your airline card to save on the baggage fees. Don't pay the stupid baggage fees, but use the lounge buddy to go hang out with, you know, especially when you're traveling with someone else. So you, if you have an, uh, an airline card, then you won't have to pay the fee a lot of times. Well, it depends on the level you're at with that airline. So, I mean, you do have to you do have to have a lot of points and get kind of up to, you know, premier status with that particular airline to be able to use the lounge for free. So, you know, the chance that you might be able to use the lounge for free, I, I don't know how. It's probably slim to none, but the fact that you can pay to get access to lounge and it's not going to break your budget, I think is the more attractive benefit. Right. But so then if you don't have uh, that card, most times you could pay an extra fee and stuff like that. Well, that, I mean, I, that's something I've never even heard. I've, I mean, I've heard about, but I've never done any investigation. Um, and that's something I, you know, I would definitely want to check out uh, the next time, uh, especially I've been in Heathrow airport for eight hours and, and I ate at Burger King paid $20 for a burger. So yeah, not, not so much. Uh, so next on mine is by far one of my favorite. I, if you follow me on Instagram, uh, which my Instagram handle is the traveling game at the traveling game. Uh, you could also, you could see so many of my pictures and, uh, I really love the editing tools. I, there's, there's several I use. Um, but the one, my go-to editing uh, app is camera plus app. I, I absolutely love this thing. You started using it too. And, um, it it just really can totally change your pictures and and um, I mean I, I photograph with with you know my good cameras my Nikon and, and other cameras as well but but these days a lot of times I'll just use my, my phone or I'll take a picture on my camera send it to to my phone and I'll edit it there too um, you know and w- what this one does where you know there's other ones like Snapseed and uh, you know some of the other ones I think they're a little more complicated this one's a lot friendlier to use. Uh, user friendly and uh, it, it, it could just change your pictures totally like it, it can change the clarity it could change the color uh, it could change the lighting uh, you know let alone all the different filters if you want to make something black and white if you want to make something brighter uh, you know especially on, on Instagram you want things to pop you want things to you know kind of be different but a lot of, a lot of times what I, I do is I'll take a picture of something and then I'm like okay what I could what I what I could do is edit that out and I edit this out and and so I think this this camera plus it really helps, and I, and I absolutely love to love it. It is my by far probably the you know my most used app that I that I use on my phone. Yeah, and I think that like if you could see us like when we're traveling and we're hanging out in the hotel room, it's pretty much Jeff on the Camera Plus app editing all the photos from the day, and me on TripAdvisor uh, or some other site trying to find a restaurant that we want to go and eat at. So um, we use apps, you know, when we're traveling, before we're traveling, while we're traveling, all sorts of things. Um, So I've got two last apps. One is actually Viator. And you may or may not have heard of them. They're really popular overseas in Europe. But what I love is that they allow you to book all sorts of different activities 
when you're in a particular location. And you can usually book an activity within seconds and they always have the cheapest prices. So I have seen everything from uh, crazy uh, tours, um, crazy uh, car tours and like fancy cars around Paris to uh, chocolate tasting tours, to champagne tours, to just walking tours around a particular city. Um, they have tons of different activities in every location that uh, pretty much that you are, that you want to go in. Um, and again, you can usually save a lot of money on booking tours that way. It's usually not the way we travel. We usually don't book a lot of tours that way. If we're, um, if we're there for work, we usually have things set up for us. But I did check uh, Viator afterwards after we got back from Stockholm and I'm like, oh, they actually had a lot of cool tours that, you know, we actually would take advantage of if we had time. So I think that's a good one. Uh, again, especially if you're traveling overseas or, you know, hey, if you're overseas and you're traveling to the U.S., they have a lot of great activities for Los Angeles, actually, that um, I didn't even know existed. So um, I think that's a great app for you to have as well. And, you know, check out these different tours and maybe try something different. Yeah. And I actually, I've met a couple of different journalists that they actually write for the Viator um, blog and stuff and write articles f for them. And they've told me about a lot of the different uh, uh, tours they've gone on and, and the same thing too. Maybe they don't, they wouldn't always travel and go on, on certain tours or bus tour or what, but, but they have a lot of really unique ones that I think, uh, you know, anybody would really enjoy and, and really uh, find out. And I think sometimes that that's also good. You do want to sometimes go on tours of whatever because there, there are even in some cities that I, i'm not the biggest hop on and off bus but there's some cities i'm like oh, okay that was a really cool hop on and off bus and it's real easy to use and, and and so you could find a lot of those there too so what do you have last on your travel app well i wouldn't be the money person if i didn't talk about a money app so this app isn't a particularly a traveling app but again i think it's something you've got to have so You've heard me talk a lot about You Need a Budget, which is my favorite budgeting app. And they've just come out with a lot of new features, uh, a lot of reporting features, so you can actually figure out how much you've spent in different categories. And they have a goal tracking feature, so you can track your goal. So if you're saving towards going to, you know, on, on whatever trip you may go, you can actually track in the app, you know, how close you are with your savings. But what I love the most about it is it helps manage your travel expenses. So you can use the mobile app while you're traveling and input all of your expenses in different categories, and it can really help you stay on budget. I know a lot of people that travel that don't use a budget, you might have a rough idea of how much, and I'm saying really rough idea of how much money you're going to spend on your trip. And you get home and you get your credit card statement and you literally almost have a heart attack at how much everything costs. Because when you're traveling, you don't care what you spend on anything, right? It's almost like you're using Monopoly money. Like it's not a real currency. And I know this from experience. Uh, and then you come home and you got to pay for it. And, you know, it can, be, it can be a lot of money. So I always travel with a budget. Yes, we go over budget. Yes, we overspend on things. Yes, we buy more than we should or that we expected. But it does help me figure out like, okay, are we, you know, where are we on eating out? Where are we on, you know, tours or museum entrance fees, uh, different things like that? Like, where are we on, um, you know, how much money we've taken out of the ATM? All of those sorts of things. So it really helps me get a good snapshot while I'm traveling there so I can make a plan when I come home that I can actually get all that stuff paid off and I don't, I don't have that big debt kind of looming over me. Most people, it takes them at least six months to pay off their trip. I find with most people I work with, it's usually years. And what happens is that debt just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So if you can just use a simple app, you know, it can just help jog your memory like, oh, hey, we're spending way too much on this. You know, maybe we might want to just like cut it back a little bit. And we've done that on trips where we've gone like, ah, oh, we don't need to go to that fancy dinner tonight. Let's just go get pizza. And we end up having more fun getting the pizza than we would, you know, spending a couple hundred dollars on some silly fancy dinner. Um, so again, it just it just helps you stay on task so that your life's a lot, lot less stressful when you end up coming home. 
So if you use the currency app, then uh, you find out how much things cost. Then you use the budget app to find out, go, oh, this is my list of things. So I think that's, that's, a, that's a really good. And if you don't have a budget, you can't go on a trip. You, can't, you, you actually have to know how to actually pay off the trip. And I think also to sometimes, too, as you were saying, if you're paying off a trip and it takes you two or three years to maybe pay off that trip off that credit card, you may go, oh, well, I don't want to go travel again because we still haven't paid off this trip. And so if you pay off all faster, the more you travel, right? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's the reason why we really like doing Travel Tuesday is, you know, we found a way to travel where it doesn't break the budget, where you can go to these amazing places. And, you know, a lot of times people think, well, I could never travel there. It's just, it's far too expensive. And, you know, like our our trip to Stockholm, like I just said, you know, cost us less than if we would just go over to Hawaii or even down to Mexico. So there's always ways to figure out how to do something for less money. You just need to do a little bit of research. And that's what we're here for is to do the research for you and to try and bring you those deals and those opportunities so that you can get out and you can explore and you don't have to wait. You don't have to build up some crazy amount in your savings account before you go out and travel. Um, so those were our list of travel apps. So send us uh, send us an email, send us uh, you know messages on social media. Let us know some of your favorite apps because uh, we'll definitely check them out. Uh, maybe feature them in a upcoming episode later on. I mean, we'll I think we should actually probably do another round of these apps. Uh, so once we discover discover a little bit more and go, oh yeah, this one's really cool. This one's really good. So send us send us those via social media. Email us and uh, let us know which your favorite travel apps are. <laughs> 